happy anniversary. It doesn't seem like it's been 10 years. It's going very, very quickly. I want to thank you, Barbara, for your truly overly kind introduction. And you and I both know the importance uh, of a coal mining heritage. Uh, Barbara's a very proud trade unionist. She's my sister. She's a fighter for working families. And she has always, always been there for all of us. And the thing that I want to thank you for the most is the friendship. You've been a great leader of the I also want to thank uh, George Corpius. I don't know if he's here or not. He was the founding president of the Alliance of Retired Americans. I want to thank him for his hard work and visionary leadership. I want to thank Ruben. Uh, for all that he's done and does. Uh, and I want to acknowledge uh, Executive Director Ed Coyle. Uh, it, it may be that all the fights of the past decade will turn out to be a preamble for the battles that are about to come. And no matter what, I promise you this, we'll stand together shoulder to shoulder for good jobs, for retirement security, and for health care, we will be there as one always. I promise you that. And I'd like to uh, acknowledge my sister, uh, Mary Kay Henry, for the terrific job that she does, the leadership that she provides, and for working. We work so close together on things. Uh, she's done a terrific job. Two other people I just want to acknowledge quickly. Uh, when you're coming along and you're a young upstart, you don't know much, you always hope that there's somebody there that will sort of ignore your exuberance, your youthful exuberance, and help you become more responsible and wise and a better leader. And I had a person like that, and that person's here today, and that person's name is Morty Barr, one of my dearest, closest friends. I just want to quickly acknowledge, you know, I'm a Pennsylvania boy, uh, and I understand that uh, the president of my state fit is out there, Rick Bloomingdale. Rick, I don't know where you're at, but thanks for everything you do every day. God bless you. So, <laughs> most of all, though, I want to recognize each one of you, because Alliance members have been an incredible incredible source of activism. You don't have to look any farther than this year in Wisconsin to see what a true difference that each one of you made. You've also been in the thick of it with SB5 in Ohio and the fights to save Social Security and Medicare all across this country. See, every major advance of the last decade really bears your fingerprints on it. You fought hard for good prescription drug law in 2003. You moved right into the successful fight against privatizing Social Security. Doesn't it get sort of tiring? I mean, they've been trying to privatize and get rid of Social Security since 1935. They can't stand success even though it stands up and bites them squarely in the butt. They want to get rid of it, and I promise you something, it is not going to happen. And then we had this guy that uh, from Texas that was president, and I think they called him W, uh, and you sort of ended his legislative run with all you did. And then in 2007 and 8, you supported the health care reform. And quite frankly, your work was crucial to the passage of the Affordable Health Care Act. And it's a good start. It's not the end. It's not everything we wanted. But it got us started in the right direction and actually gives us a chance to reach our goal of quality health care for every American. And let me thank you for this year because you made sure that the attacks against Social Security and Medicare were in the public eye. So our worst politicians 
couldn't be silent killers of our most successful family protection program. And all this time, your strength has really come from the grassroots. You took those bus trips to Canada to buy prescription drugs. You held meetings outside congressional offices to defend Medicare. Let me just say this to you. You're a real political force. You're a powerful force. Very powerful force. A more pleasant, surprised, and happy to be alongside you. And when those politicians come out of the super committee, when they come after us, you'll be ready, and we'll be ready, and we'll stand side by side united. We're not going to let anybody, and I mean anybody, cut Social Security and Medicare benefits. I don't care who the world is. an advocate for seniors. This organization is a powerful ally of all working people. You're a movement builder. And I think your power comes from three separate things. Your credibility and connections in your communities. Your experience as activists, whether a weather career or political storms. And the passion that lies deep within you right here. No one can give you that. It's what you come with. See, it's a passion that motivates you day after day, year after year, to put yourself out there to fight to make America what it should be, what it can be, and what we need it to be, what it must be for generations and generations to come. And for that, I salute you. On behalf of every last member of the AFL-CIO and the American Labor Movement, we salute you for taking on yet one more fight and being there for working people. See, your role is only going to grow more important in the years to come. I think we all know about the retirement boom underway today. The oldest baby boomers turned 65 this year. And for the next 19 years, more than 10,000 people will hit that age every single day, eventually swelling the over 65 population to more than 72 million people. Now, do you think those 72 million people are going to have any political power in this country? Well, I. I sort of think so. I think that's a voice that even the deaf will be able to hear. <laughs> and let me tell you, there's only one organization that will unite them with America's labor movement. And that's the Alliance for Retired Americans. Because every year, for the next two decades, the voting power of seniors and retirees will increase. And, but which way is the question? Which way will America's seniors go? Friends, I gotta tell you, it won't be easy. The signals really aren't good right now. The only age group that President Obama lost in 2008 was the 65 plus age group. In that election, the older you are, the more likely you were to vote for Republicans. In the congressional elections across the country last year, in gubernatorial elections in Virginia and New Jersey, and in the special election to fill Senator Ted Kennedy's seat in Massachusetts, seniors as a whole voted for Republican candidates by margins well into the double digits. Well, we've got to be honest about this. Too many seniors bought candidate McCain's